while the particle system was the biggest new feature in Cinema 4D that they just released, um, I thought the Ivy generator was pretty interesting too. So that's what I wanted to go over in this one. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about the Ivy generator. Uh, it's one of the new features in 2024.4 point. Was there another four in there? Anyway, we'll open up the asset browser, type in Ivy. We have our Ivy generator node operator here, which is kind of the, the brains of the operation. So let's double click to add that to our scene. If you're gonna use your own pre, uh, leaves you've made, great. If you wanna use some that are already made for us, we can use those right here. And with that, we are done in our asset browser. Now we can see the leaves that we dragged in. Really, there's two sets here, the English Ivy and then the young ones. You know, the biggest difference really just being size. So that actually I don't mind, but if you wanted to just use one or the other, you absolutely could. And um, these leaves also give us a vine material. So we'll drag that onto the Ivy generator. And then to add the leaves in, all we need to do is select what leaves we want, make them a child of our Ivy generator. And there we go. So you could absolutely make your own if you wanted more detail, a different shape of leaf, thickness perhaps, um, and just make them a child of your Ivy generator. Now to get this thing rolling, you need to go into the Ivy tab here and tell it what surface you want to have your Ivy created on. So I dragged in my column here. Notice that it is moving from or being generated from my IV generator object itself to my column here. And so, you know, you can see this a bit more if you move your column, right? You can see that how far away it is does matter. Um, and while it is possible to, to kind of do something similar with moving the IV generator, you have to do kind of get it to redraw, rework by either adjusting the seed or relinking the surface object. So I generally don't recommend doing that. It's just a little bit trickier there. Um, I also want to point out, we do have several presets here. So if you wanted something like dense climbing Ivy, you can do that. And it, this one will take a second and you'll notice, wait, where is it going? Um, and that's because our column, you know, is either too close or too far uh, away from it. So, you know, it's really, really dense. There's a lot of calculations going on, so it can take a second, but sure enough, there it is. And if you're going, that doesn't look that good. It has more to do with the preset than anything else. If you were to set this to say, one of the fence options, I found it actually looks pretty good in terms of fitting it to your object. So just keep that in mind. It also could have something to do with the fact that this object, um, you know, is was originally an FBX, it was scaled. Um, so just be a bit mindful of that. All right, but these presets can be very helpful for, you know, getting where you need to be very quickly. We can also see the thickness of our vines there, which is really nice. I'm um, going through these properties, though, we do have a max length. So this can make our individual things, um, our branches longer, which in this case is doing a really good job still sticking to this. We also have density, right? So we can turn this down a little bit if there was too much. And then branch length, all right? Maybe not as important for something like this where it's doing a really good job sticking to our object, um, but something we would want to consider if it was gonna grow up or be hanging down from something. You also have different options for the length, can add some variation there. And the step size, I haven't seen make a huge difference. Um, it almost seems like kind of like a scale property, but for the most part, you know, I didn't see much reason to um, do anything with it. You do have control over this surface property. So that's kind of how much or little it's gonna try to cling to the surface. You can see, you know, compared to what it was before, um, changing this value, we do get the ivy growing a little bit further away or off of. Um, that, Let's see if we can't right click and reset it. And somehow we ended up with something very different here. Um, we have an offset property. So if you want this to be offset a little bit more or less from your geometry, so it doesn't quite intersect it, that can help with that. And then the stick distance really has to do with how far away your object can be, right? So initially when my column was further away, nothing was drawing, um, that has to do with our stick distance. And as we turn this up, you can see it is starting to stick more and more to my object. 
You can also have a target, so have it grow towards a specific thing. Um, for instance, I could create a null, just so we can see this. Let's make it a circle, maybe place it there, and use that as our target for our ivy. And you can see that's what it's kind of growing towards. So that's another way you can, you know, help control your ivy here. All right, still kind of on the surface of our column, but still growing towards our null. Right. Spline is somewhat similar. Um, it allows you to kind of almost specify the shape you want of your IV to have along a spline while still, you know, maintaining and, and using the other parameters here. Uh, branching, I'm just trying to curl that down. Uh, just some options to control what we're seeing here. A little bit more irregularity, some variation just to kind of change the overall shape, or in this case, smoothness of our branches here. Obviously we have a seed value, so you can randomize it. And you can see you get very different results here. Something that, you know, doesn't look like it's working very well. Um, and click one more over, and or a couple more over, I should say, and you get something very, very different. Um, but I do think the fence preset here, you know, at least for this column, tends to work pretty well. I should also mention, um, in the generator section, you can decide if you want this to be an instance or multi-instance. I would probably just leave this alone in the object tab. Not really sure why we're seeing this, but it's letting us know all about our, our leaves as children, I believe. In the geometry section, you can decide what you want to do with your branches, whether you want them as geometry or splines. Maybe you want to do something else with the geometry um, yourself, maybe like a sweep or something but you can definitely do something there. And then, you know, if you only want specific splines, you can do that. Um, can decide whether or not we want leaves. So if you just want the splines, maybe for an animation of some kind, right? Can do this here. Back in our ivy, if we were to take our density down, you know, you can almost get it to kind of grow out a little bit. Well, not perfect. You can see how that does kind of work for something like that. So leaves, whether or not we want a lot of leaf density or lower leaf density, how often we want leaves on our, the segments of our spline, the scale of them, how much variation, and what we want the size for, of our leaves to be at the end of each spline. Okay, whether or not we want clinging leaves or how we want them to react, and then we can mess around. It would help if the leaves were a little bit larger, I think. There we go. Um, you know, the angle of your leaves here, whether you want them to be downward or upwards or mirrored, how gravity affects them. Um, and if you want to add more variation to the rotation, you can do that there. As for the dangle leaf section, I really haven't been able to get this to do a whole lot, um, either by working with the properties here or in the ivy section by working with the dangle forest, which is what I thought would have, you know, made a difference here. So uh, if anybody knows why or or how you can do some, some things with this, I'd be very curious to know. But you also have different vine options for the thickness, depending on what your geometry um, is doing or if you're creating geometry. And uh, it's nice that we can control the number of rotations here if you do want to try and, you know, optimize how much geometry you have. Um, and then you have subdivision length and subdivision angle. I believe these are different spline properties uh, that allow you to control kind of how smooth these are. Um, so in theory, if we go with a smaller angle, not zero, as that typically um, can help, yeah, make Cinema 4D a little angry, but going with a lower angle, a little bit higher subdivision length, you can see how much smoother our vines are, but that is at the cost of additional geometry. And if you wanted to see that, then you absolutely could just, you know, turn on um, your lines here and see that as you lower the angle, um, you get more. And the length here will also probably give you more of these segments um, perhaps as well. Although that's not what I'm seeing. Um, so maybe that has something else there. So in terms of kind of smoothing this out, subdivision angle makes the biggest difference. You do have um, selections here that it is using for the leaves as well as the branches in terms of the materials. Um, you can see those there. 
And really, that is uh, about it. So, um, you know, with that set up, I do have, you know, a little bit of a scene here, although I'm not sure how my camera got moved. I guess it's more the column that got moved. So let's zero that out, put it towards the center. And it's still amazing to me how much, you know, that really changes the, um, the ivy. So let's just try dragging that back in and changing this back to fence. Um, and yeah, that's, mm, I'm not sure about that. It was looking a lot better beforehand. So, you know, this is really where maybe the seed is important, perhaps using another one of these presets um, is there. There's not a column preset, unfortunately. Um, see that to me, it looks too much, but knowing what we've just talked about, we could absolutely turn down the leaf density. And in the Ivy section, turn down the density as well. Maybe we'll get something. I can turn off the lines here. Yeah, something like that. Um, all the geometry is beating, being created for us. All the materials are there as well. And so you can see we end up with um, a pretty nice end result. So that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, take care.